Hello and welcome to this session. In this session we will see controlling a LED remotely from a PC. So this is a very minimal circuit. You can see here we have already an LED connected, a green color LED connected through a 100 ohm register and the black wire goes to ground and the red wire goes to digital input output pin 12. You can use any pin, you already know that. So very simple program, let's start. Let's get started. So we have here void setup and void loop as usual. As you know, serial, you have to use a serial uh, library. Serial dot begin is the function. And you have to tell at what baud rate you want to communicate. So the default baud rate is 9600, which is 9600 bits per second, which is good enough for most of the applications. If you want, if you are interested in uh, serial dot begin function, you can simply see here. Go to serial dot begin, and it says sets the data rate in bits per second for serial transmission data. Supported rates are given here, and we are using ninety six hundred. An optional second argument configures the data parity and stop bits. So this we need not to uh, configure because we are not interested in parity and stop bits. So the default communication is good enough for all our experiments. Fine. So let's get into programming. And pin number 12 is configured as output. So you know what to write. output next void loop and here we have to uh, monitor whether any serial data is available or not as I told you this RX and TX lines uh, let me show you through marker this RX and TX lines here they are with respect to Arduino so when Arduino receives any data it says RX and when Arduino transmits any data, it's TX. Same with pin number 0 and 1, same, da same data can be uh, accessed from here. I have zoomed a bit. You already know these wires exist and they are connected to respective pins. Now coming to our program. So how do we monitor whether any RX signal is available or not? For that we have to monitor the serial buffer. So inside this microcontroller we have a peripheral somewhere inside which is a serial peripheral, serial hardware. And the serial hardware has a buffer line. Buffer means it keeps uh, data, incoming data in a separate, um, separate reserved space. Okay, so the reserved space we have to monitor whether is there any data or not which can be processed. So that data, that Rx data, we can monitor using a function, serial.available. So to know more about that function, let's get into documentation. And here I have Arduino.available. So you can see, it says, get the number of bytes available for reading from serial port. This is data that that's already arrived and stored in the serial receiver buffer which holds 64 bytes okay so what we'll do in our program we'll simply write if uh, serial dot available greater than 0 means we have some bytes to read then do something okay so do something let's say serial dot print let's say print ln print with a new line uh, some value maybe it's not a value let's say hello so this is just a test program we will see whether we are correct so far or not Okay, my board has crashed previously, so let me 
we select So you can see here the RX and TX line uh, blinked for a while then nothing happened. So this function serial.available is continuously monitoring for any uh, data available for uh, read means any receiver data. So from the PC we haven't sent any data yet. So moment we start our receive, uh, moment we send some data from PC this receiver line of Arduino will become active. So for that, let me open the serial port, uh, sorry, serial terminal. And suppose I type some hello. And this, the moment I initiate this, the program, because this, it triggered uh, a serial event. So moment it triggered a serial event, the RX line blinked for a very small duration, which uh, we couldn't see properly. But the TX line is active very high. The reason is we are printing hello from Arduino. So Arduino is sending characters through serially. And what are those characters? Hello. So if you want to view Control Shift M, we'll open the prompt again. You can see this hello is printed so this is the transmission from Arduino so you cannot actually look at the data and say whether it's a transmitted data or received data you have to monitor here uh, RX and TX lines so now it's not triggered yet so okay we have to reset the program because there is no uh, data available from RX which will trigger this operation so let me close this uh, it's not actually we wanted we wanted to control this LED based on uh, user input so let's read data from serial device so how to read that so we have functions for that so in the Arduino here we have there is a read if you go to read It says reads incoming serial data inherits from stream unity class and it reads one byte at a time. So the first byte, it returns the first byte of incoming serial data available or minus one if no data is available. So let's try with, uh, okay, serial dot read and this will return an integer value so let me store that integer value in variable a that's not very smart variable but okay let me let me make it uh, rx so received data right upload and some data if I send you can see the receive line now blinks because we are receiving some value which is not yet uh, used in our program okay let's move further so here we can say uh, serial dot print ln rx See, we still we are we're not very close to our program because this is a warm-up session we are just looking at the various functions of serial and actually we are trying to uh, provide a roadmap a think process that how we should proceed in any actual programs so now we want to view what data has been received so serial.println will print the variable rx okay so now let's again upload this program control u uploading is done and control shift M will open the serial monitor. So suppose I type one and enter, it prints 49. So the reason it prints 49, if you remember your ASCII table, so let me show you the ASCII table. So I have here a Wikipedia image, which says 48 is decimal zero and 49 is one. 
so we have entered 1 so we received 49 so suppose let me enter 2 we will receive 50 so actually what we are doing here is quite simple you can see if I type 3 and enter you can see our the output is 51 so actually we are transmitting this data because you can see we are doing a serial dot print ln okay so first we have read received means at this point which line will be active our rx line will be active so during this operation our rx line will be active and later when we do serial print uh, ln our tx line will be active i hope you understood this i need not to repeat time and again okay so let's get into programming so we need not to print this again and again we know uh, 1 is 49 and 2 is 50 so what we will do is we will program that if user enters 1 it will turn on the led and if he enters 0 it will turn off the led so here we will see the switch statement so switch statement we can simply see here as you know in the C C++ we know the switch statement used to switch multiple cases and here also we will use same switch statement this is a syntax for switch and case 1 when okay when rx is 1 means user has entered 1 in our case it is not case 1 it is case 49 right ascii table 49 is 1 and here we will say digital write pin number 12 hi and according to syntax we have to write a break similarly case 48 is 0 right in ASCII it is 0 digital write 12 low and it's break again okay I hope you understood uh, till this it's very simple because we are reading the data in the ASCII format serial data in serial read function returns ASCII values so we have kept that value in an integer variable rx so as you know serial dot read reads one data at a time so when we enter one it will read uh, one is a one byte and that comes into rx and it is interpreted as ASCII so it is turned to be 49 so based on that we have created our switch cases 49 means on and 48 means off let's upload the program uploading is done let's open the serial monitor okay so let me send one okay and with zero it goes off I hope this is very simple and easy to understand but you may ask me that uh, instead of ASCII why can't we use simply the decimal values for that we have a separate function which we will see right away let's come to our documentation so here we have parse int so this is one of the serial uh, functions serial library functions parse int what it does is looks for the next valid integer in the incoming serial stream so you know the serial stream incoming serial stream from PC or other device is withheld in the serial hardware of 64 bytes it has uh, capacity and moment we initiate this serial dot uh, read or serial dot parse int it gets start uh, you start reading from this buffer so this parse int function what it does is simply read the data and convert it into integer so this is what we are actually looking for so now I will modify this function and instead of serial dot read I will use serial dot parse int 
okay and this thing these remain same and here instead of 49 I can directly write 1 and 0 okay upload the program done open the serial monitor 1 so you can see we have uh, printed the 1 also in our program 0 turns off and that's all for this session I hope you understood so far and this is actually very very important the serial communication is used in GSM modems Bluetooth and range of devices in fact it is it is a standard or standard in industry for years and it has still a lot of scope available with it uh, with serial you can actually um, do a lot of work similar to uh, internet of things also uh, which is very very uh, popular nowadays in fact we we will see one of these experiments in our data sessions where we will receive the data uh, temperature sensor data or any um, sensor data and plot it over internet okay so serial functions and serial libraries are very important i hope you will go through the documentation and use it accordingly see you in the next video